friends, it's Laura with Laura B. Floss Tube. Welcome or welcome back. I'm so glad you joined me today. This video is going to be a little bit of a bonus video, per se, about the applique quilts that you may be seeing that are designed by Lori Holt. The one thing that is a lot, if you haven't done one of her quilts before, is trying to decide how to be prepared. The one thing that everyone does that I've noticed in different groups that I belong to a little differently is prep work. So, you know, I've done it both ways. I've cut the pieces as I need them for each block, and I've also cut everything in advance. Um, and as I've started to cut more things in advance, I've decided that depending on the quilt, that can be a little crazy too. So how to build a scarecrow is starting next week and I am sitting here thinking about how I'm going to be prepared for this and how to cut all of my stuff and how to get organized and I have my plan and I thought hey this might be something I could share with my viewers because maybe someone needs some helpful tips and tricks and some advice as well. So here we are at the cutting table getting ready to start cutting our fabric. Now I have already cut probably two or three pieces of fabric, but then I thought, all right, we need to video this just for everyone out there that might be struggling on how to get prepared for this upcoming sew along. So I'm going to show you what I've done so far, um, a few of the things I do to get organized for this upcoming sew along and others, and we're going to cut a few pieces of fabric and just kind of walk through that process together a little bit and hopefully you will pick up something that will help you. So the first thing that I've done is in the cutting guide itself, I have went through and I numbered all of the blocks that we're gonna be doing. And so I referenced those with the cutting guide in the back where it shows what each block is called and um, numbered those in my cutting guide. So let me show you that. And then we'll also talk about the fabric and the bags and the boards and everything I got going on. All right, so this cutting guide is available on the Riley Blake website. It is free to download and print at your leisure. There's even a cute little notes page at the end that she includes. So if you do journals or um, notebooks or whatever, you might want to go and download this just so you can make some notes as you go along. The next thing I did was I went through and I got 17 of my Ziploc bags out. Now, most of these have been numbered and most of these have been used before for previous sew alongs. So just ignore the little scratchy scratchies. It's just because I'm writing the new name block on each one. So each one of them are numbered and each one of them have the name of the block written on it. And this is in one of my project keepers and they're just waiting there so when I'm going through cutting my fabric, I can put them in the bags. Now you might notice that my interfacing is already in the bag. Yesterday I traced all my interfacing shapes, used the back of the cutting guide, because um, there's a block breakdown for how, how to build a scarecrow, which is really nice by the way, um, and put all the interfacing shapes in the bags. So all of those interfacing shapes are already sorted in the bag, so when I get to making that block, they're already there ready for me. So the next thing I did after that was I sorted my fabric. Now I don't want to take this out of the box to show you, but just believe me that all of the fabrics are in here in the order of the cutting guide. So when I'm going through the cutting guide and doing all of the different fabrics, they're in the stack right here. So the next one I have to cut is this plum bouquet. And so I pull it off the top of the stack and I'll do the cutting for it put it to the side and go to the next fabric. So I don't have to spend any time since I did since I pre-sorted my fabrics in order, I don't have to spend any time digging through my pile and finding and matching up which fabrics which. They're already in the right order, in the same order as the cutting guide, so it's going to be a quick and easy process to get these cut. So the last thing I did to get organized for cutting my fabric for the How to Build a Scarecrow quilt is I thought about the pieced border blocks. Now there are 24 pieced border blocks that go around the outside of the quilt. So I printed out numbers 1 through 24 and I have design boards that I made a while back that fit nicely inside of my project bag or my project tote. So when I have all of these cut out, these will stack inside of here. I can put the lid back on and close it up and they're ready for whenever I can um, find time to 
sew the blocks together. Since all of the blocks are the same, I will just be able to grab one little stack of pieces and sew that block and then keep going through the pile until I have all 24 of them completed. So you'll notice I have the numbers, one through 24, and then when I start cutting fabric for that block, I start clipping them together. I clip them together because, well, things happen sometimes and if they fall on the floor, I do not want my pieces all messed up and I have to figure out what goes where, right? So I use these oversized um, wonder clips and clip all of my pieces together for each block. It also makes it a lot easier to stack these in the project tote and to grab one block at a time when I have time to sew them together. The final thing I do to help myself be a little more organized and efficient while I'm cutting is I make myself kind of like a cheat guide. Uh, remember when I showed you the blocks and how they are in the front of the cutting guide and I, to I told you I went through and I numbered them all on that page? Well, the other thing I do is I make myself a little cheat sheet that I clip inside my binder. Let me grab that. And it basically just lists all the blocks and the number bag that they're in. So as I'm going through the cutting guide, I, and I like using the numbers because a number is easier to find in the pile rather than trying to find Apple or Scarecrow. So if I know that Apple is number 15, then I know I'm going to into my bag 15 and I know where it's at in the pile. So they are stacked in numerical order. So I do the list of blocks, one in alpha order, one in numerical order. Um, I, I'm not really sure why I do that, just because I feel like using it in alpha order is more efficient because I can find it in the list quicker and then I know what number it is. But if I have something that um, maybe for some reason I want the number first, then I have, I have it both ways in my binder. Okay, so let's cut one of our pieces of fabric and I can kind of give you some tips and tricks on that and just some advice from what I've learned from doing several of these quilts in the past. The next fabric I have to cut is the Plum Bouquet, um, and it is a fat eighth. And the only thing I'm cutting from this is five two and a half inch squares for piece block number six. So for five and a half inch squares, you know, on a flat eighth, you have nine inches basically this way. Um, actually, like, well, this one's not quite even nine. So basically, nine inches this way and twenty inches this way. Uh, so for cutting two and a half inch squares, I could cut. Um, a, a two and a half a two and a half inch strip off of here and just use this and that's probably what I'll do because that gives me a good chunk of fabric down here in case I do want to use this for another scrappy quilt in the future. So um, you know you can cut your two and a half inch strips or you can get a five inch square and cut that out and then cut that into sections and it really just depends on what you feel is um, best for you and how you work most efficiently. For me, I'm gonna do a two and a half inch strip and then um, another five inch. And I've had some people ask me what rotary cutter I'm using. I am using a Quilter Select rotary cutter. It is a little heavier than some other rotary cutters on the market. I really like it. Um, I will say that the weight takes a little bit of time to get used to, but after you're used to that weight, it's really nice. So I need five of these. And I am going to have a little bit of fabric left over. It's really up to you whether you want to save that for a scrappy project or if you want to just toss that out. And then the next thing I need is I just need two more squares. So I'm going to cut a two and a half by five. I'll grab the number six off my design board, clip them with the number and put it back on the design board in numerical order. Now this is all we're cutting out of this fabric. So I'm just gonna fold it back up real nicely and put it in the um, pile over on the other side, on the other side of my table. Um, and I like stacking my fabrics back in the same order because then I'll put them back in the box at the very end. And if I need that fabric again, I can find it because I'll probably be looking in the cutting guide first to figure out where I went wrong. What I'm saying is sometimes I'm not perfect and sometimes I forget to cut something. <laughs> All right, so this one is the raindrop bouquet and I need nine two and a half inch squares. So this is kind of the same. I cut the first strip a little bigger than two and a half because I don't like 
those little zigzag edges, the little pinked edges. So I just like cutting those off of there. Now I know I can get three of them across. And then for these, since I need nine of them and I have three strips, I'm just going to stack them. Now this one has a fold and okay, I'll be honest. You, I should probably, I should probably press it. I probably should, but I'm probably not going to. Um, so <laughs> I'll just put it underneath and hold it down with a ruler. And I cut this edge off straight because I know I have a little extra with this strip anyway. And then I can cut three at a time. And again, it's up to you whether or not you want to save that little bit of scrap or if you want to um, toss it for a different project. All right, so I need four for one of them and five for another. So four of them go to 10 and five of them go to 18. Now I am not going to be able to get all of this cut out in one sitting. So I will, um, I mark in my binder as I go along, like what I've done. That way when I come back to it, I can pick right back up. And that way I try to finish up a fabric. That's what I would say. I don't want to lose my places I'm cutting through a fabric. Um, some of them you start cutting out several pieces. So I like to mark them off as I go along in the cutting guide. And this one is going to kind of be like that. Um, Cause there's several pieces to cut for this. So let's talk about that for a minute too. Okay. So now I'm to a fabric where I have several things to cut for it. Um, and there's different sizes and there's different things that's going on. So before I even start cutting this fabric, I'm going to read down through all of the measurements and decide if there's anything that I can cut together to be a little more efficient. Um, and for this one in particular, I feel like there definitely is because the first one that's listed is four and a half by five and three quarters. If I went ahead and cut that without looking at the next one, then I would be okay because I have plenty of fabric, but the next one down is three and a half by six. Well, these are for the applique pieces. They don't need to be exact. It wouldn't hurt anything to go bigger. Don't go smaller, but it wouldn't hurt anything to go a little bigger. So what I'm going to do is take four and a half and three and a half, which is eight, and cut an eight by six inch piece out of my fabric because then I can just cut those two pieces off. And instead of making multiple cuts, multiple sizes all over my fabric, I have one kind of larger piece that I can get both of the pieces out of. Another thing I like to do when I'm starting to cut pieces like that is just think about, um, you know, what I have that I can use that would make my job a little easier. So like I said, I'm cutting an eight by six inch piece to get both of those pieces. Well, I have an eight and a half inch ruler, right? So I can just line that up on the um, fabric at eight by six and cut this out. And that way I don't have to measure a lot of things with my ruler I have because I have a square ruler to use. And then I'll slide this down because that is the six. I'll slide this down to three and a half. And now I have the first two pieces. Now, if I am cutting a lot of, now if I'm cutting a lot of pieces out of the same fabric, I will start kind of stacking them on my cutting mat in the order of the cutting guide. Instead of going through and finding each bag for each piece, I will stack them. All right, well, I'll lay them out. I'll lay them out on my cutting mat. And then when I get that whole fabric cut, then they're in order and I can put them in the bags. I just found that that's just one way I can be a little more efficient with my cutting. Obviously, if you want to do one at a time, then, you know, do that. All right, then I also need 12 two and a half inch squares. These I cut right at 10 inches, so I am going to line their edges up perfectly. And this will give me my 12. So the two larger pieces I cut out, one is for the overall and one is for the letter S. So I look at my list and I say, oh, overalls is 12 and the um, word is five. So I know that I can just go ahead and put this in the bag for number 12 and the other one in number five. And that's 
pretty much how it's done. Um, I'm just going to keep going through the cutting guide. Now, to be quite honest with you, there are typically like 40 or 50 different fabrics in each one of these quilts. So, I mean, there's six pages of cutting for this quilt. So it's going to take quite a bit of time. Um, I, you know, I've timed it before. I mean, six to eight hours of cutting is not unrealistic to expect. Um, so that's a lot of time. And if you don't want to pre-cut your fabrics, that's fine. You don't have to. You can cut them for each block as you go along. You can trace your shapes for each block as you go along. I've honestly done it both ways. Um, I do like having the bags and have all the pieces and everything in them. So that way, when I get to making that block, I can just grab the bag. I don't have to do any cutting. I can just, you know, get the bag, get the pieces, sit down and um, do my thing. But that doesn't mean that you have to do that. If that's not how you work most efficiently and that's not how you work most creatively, then find your own groove and find your own thing in your own way of how you want to do it. So that's kind of where I'm at. I have a lot of cutting to do for the How to Build a Scarecrow quilt. That sew along actually starts on the 20th, but the piece block stuff is already out there, which I haven't even started that, obviously, because I am way behind on I'm cutting fabric. But I plan on, you know, spending some time the next over the next few days cutting fabric each day and getting it done. Um, and I'm hoping that by the 20th, I will be able to start the first block. But if not, that's OK, because, you know, I'm just going to have to do it at my own pace, just like all of us do. So I hope that you did pick up a tip or trick along the way. You saw something that you might have liked. Um, something you can incorporate into your organization if this is the path you choose to go with your applique quilt progress. Um, and if you have any other tips and suggestions, please share them in the comments below. I look forward to reading them. I appreciate you liking and subscribing to my channel. I appreciate you watching the videos and sharing the videos out to your friends if you think someone else can benefit. And I hope that you will find some time to do something creative and crafty until we meet again. And until then, Happy stitching.